You may have seen the teaser in the last episode, but now it is time to find out more about our brand new audio tour. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Waterquest line and if you have been enjoying what you've been seeing lately then please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. You will be surprised at just how much it can help the railway. Now before we get into the main topic of today's episode it's time for a quick fire look around the railway to see what's been happening since we last saw you. Well, let's start here in the boiler shop with our Merchant Navy Canadian Pacific. As you can see, the smoke box has been assembled. The team here are currently cleaning it down, ready for painting, ready to be mounted onto the boiler. On the line of the boiler, you can see the crenolin has been finished and the cladding and lagging at the front has started being installed. In fact, the first two sections are completed, ready for painting. The lagging keeps all the heat in the boiler. Initially, we used um, asbestos, so understandably, we don't use that anymore. We use fiberglass insulation as a safer alternative, but still provides those fantastic heat retention properties. The cladding protects the lagging and also allows us to give the locomotive its distinctive livery when it comes to the painting. So, quite a good few steps forward, and the locomotive really is coming together. Now looking at the other side of the engine where the boiler is going to sit, we've added a few more parts. This is the ash pan which Jamie in the boiler shop has made and it's currently being stored waiting for this moment. This sits underneath the firebox. Any of the spent coal drops here into the hopper which then gets emptied at the start and end of the day. Understandably we don't want to uh, drop hot coals onto the track and set fire to half of Hampshire. Very bad thing indeed. Elsewhere, you can see the middle big end con rod, which is part of the motion which actually drives the locomotive. That's going in now after having some metalwork and machining as part of the general overhaul process. And they've also been fine tuning the oil lubrication pipes because uh, understandably it's handy for things to keep rolling. Looking at our stand 475079, on the engine side, the team are currently assembling the brake rigging, which is what you can see here. And on the tender, they're currently painting the inside of the bunker space. Just another step forward to getting this locomotive back up and running. Now here in the carriage works, we've been following the roof that is being installed on our bullied coach. Well, that is now pretty much finished. They're actually gonna start epoxying this roof tomorrow. Now, as a reminder, this process, um, the initial roof canvases that gave it its uh, waterproof properties, they would normally only last about four or five years, which was fine when it was in service. However, in the modern day, or well, in heritage railways, it just doesn't last that long. So with the BY van, they tried an epoxy roof. The idea would be it would last maybe 10 times longer, 40 years or so. That went well, so that's what we're going to try with this. So we've got a camera set up. We're hopefully going to have a lovely time lapse. And of course, we'll update you in the next episode. Following on from our previous episode where Neil took us around the coach, which let's put it nicely, has taken a fair bit of a beating in its lifetime. Work has really flown by. They've completed the steel work repairs. Jose is currently in the process of painting, so filling in the voids and painting it up beautifully. And uh, while we're here, let's have a quick look at the inside. Well, as you can see, they've had a bit of a strip out since we last walked through here with Neil. This area here is, uh, well, it's turned into uh, partly of a makeshift workshop, but the plan in the grand scheme of things is to turn this segment into an accessible area. We want to have an accessible coach on every service train. The challenge is these coaches weren't built as such, so they need to be modified, which we've seen on the other coaches which we've talked about, like our bullied coach where the new roof is being done. The challenge is, however, we only have so many people. We have a wonderful team of talented staff and volunteers, but it's only a finite pool. So in the meantime, they're making the decision whether to put this back into its original state so we can get it out and back in service and then bring it in to do the work we really want to do. So, grand plan, an accessible coach, but for now, watch this space. Looking at our running fleet, the Ivert and 506, they've both had a washout and a few running repairs. In the meantime, our little Blue Engine and Kilmerson have been working the shuttle services. These have been absolutely great. If you haven't come down to uh, see this one going hell for level on the shuttle, it's well worth a visit. Today, it's also having its annual boiler exam, which uh, understandably all steam locomotives need to have, where the boiler inspector has a thorough examination inside and out, both out of steam and in steam as well. 
Now you may have seen already, we've had a new locomotive join our fleet as a visitor, 257 Squadron, courtesy from our friends at Seven Locomotives Limited and the Spa Valley Railway. She forms one of the first visitors for our gala, along with 4144 from the Didcot Railway Centre and 6695 from Swindon and Cricklade Railway. It's set to be a fantastic weekend. Kilmston should be doing drive experiences, so do look again at watercrestline.co.uk for more information. Now, another event on the horizon is our Engineering Open Weekend. These are a fantastic couple of days where you can see just what goes into operating a heritage railway in the modern age. We're doing behind the scenes tours of our workshop. There's gonna be lots of society stands. If you go down to Allsford into the Good Shed, we're having a volunteers open day. Lots of departments down, including us from the film unit. So you do come down, say hello, and who knows, you might even want to volunteer. So a fantastic couple of days. Details are on watercrestline.co.uk. Naturally, not that you need another reason to convince you to come down to our Engineering Open weekend, but if you do, then do come down to the Cattle Dock at Allsford. Where the Hampshire unit will be, the doors will be open, do go and have a look around inside, meet the team working on it. And if you do want to find out a little bit more about this unit and why it's so important to this railway's history, then we've got you covered. We did a lovely sit-down interview with our Operations Manager, Richard Bentley, to find out a bit more about its history. So do give that a watch, and if you do want to support this unit, then the details are in the video, and I'll chuck a link in the description below. Now, looking at 499, they've finished riveting the bottom of a tank to the valance and mainframe. This forms the bottom of the tank. So, to provide the X structure, they've started cutting out the steel bars to form the sort of support structure of the inside. Understandably, it's 5,000 gallons of water. A lot moving around, so you want to brace against that to prevent any sort of damage. On the underside of a the tender, they've been making the steam heating and vacuum pipe work. It's quite a long and complex job. Lots of bends and also lots of bespoke brackets that need to be made up. Over in the boiler shop, that's all progressing well. They're currently working on the foundation ring, sorting out the historic scars of ages, let's say, and also field welding any screw holes. Now, if you are down here for the engineering open weekend, then do come down and say hello to the team here. But we have to tell you more about 499 and also show you how you can support the society and bring this engine back into steam. Mark Pedley's memorial fund to machine a new eccentric rod has made fantastic progress and it is brilliant to see just how many people have donated. So do have a look at that. Hello and welcome to the Watercrest Line, Hampshire's Heritage Railway. And welcome aboard this tour with me, Peter Dixon. On our journey up the line to Alton and back, I'll be here to give you an insight into this wonderful railway. From its history to the sights you can see en route, the Watercrest Line has plenty to offer, believe me. I'll tell you about the building of the line and the local area, the story of the railway as we know it today, involving dedication, disaster and triumph. Well, a lot's happening here at the Watercrest Line. Now, if you watched the last episode, you may have seen a little teaser for something me and Simon are working on. So, uh, well, it's a good introduction to Simon. He is the brains behind Steam Illuminations, and you may have seen him here because he's also a fireman like myself. And uh, so, uh, apologies if we're a little bit grubby. We've, we've both been firing <laughs> today. Uh, fairly well at getting uh, clean today. Yeah, very yeah. good. My nails. Anyway, <laughs> how, how was your day? Really good. Yeah, yeah, I was out on the live vert, and uh, the coal at the moment is it's excellent. very good coal. It's not like that safety coal stuff I did. No, 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 yeah. it's really, yeah. It caught me out a little bit to begin with, but... It, it did as well, yeah. That bit out, it all went well. Mere technicalities. <laughs> yeah, I was on the shuttle today with um, the, our little blue engine. That definitely doesn't look like a, another little blue engine. <laughs> and, and yeah, it was um, yeah, rocket fuel, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, really good. But anyway... We've been working on an audio tour. There's so many interesting things that you see out of the window, which may not clock. So, yeah, inadvertently, we were working both on the same idea at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and we hadn't talked to each other about it. We both really just kind of thought this was super triggers in, in other ways of doing it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So to give you a background, um, G, um, the steam illumination technology works on GPS, um, and I was working on a. a audio tool which will work on your phone. However, these coaches are essentially Faraday cages. Yeah. Uh, we'll I could have told you straight away. <laughs> so. you, you did just after work out how it worked. <laughs> uh, but that was through my own, you know, uh, so when we started with Steam Illuminations, obviously the thing was I wanted to 
GPS trigger it. So I did go down the phone, the phone or a tablet route to create the signal to trigger our systems. And as you found, it, it, it was a nightmare. In, um, you'd set a point and particularly going into the cutting, it, it would think you're kind of two you know, miles, two yeah, miles yeah. down the road. Um, and I quickly discovered that, like you say, you know, this is a Faraday cage in some respects, it is difficult for signals to come in and out. But actually some phones, they're not true GPS. Um, they pick up slightly, but they actually use the phone networks to triangulate their position. Going through our cutting, there's sometimes no signal at all. So it, it wasn't strong enough for what I needed. I had, it had to be bang on what we were doing. And then for an audio tour, as you found, uh, it was a bit too random. Indeed so. <laughs> so that's the technical stuff out of the way of why we couldn't do it. Here's how it's going to work for you as a passenger. By the time you've seen this, we're either going to be very close to launching or it will have launched. Uh, we're going to have coaches which will be set out as audio tour coaches. Starting from Walsford, it's going to give you a round trip with our friend Peter Dixon doing the voiceover again. On the way up, it's going to tell you the story of the line, why we're called the Watercrest Line, the initial building of the line, and on the way back, it'll be the rebuilding of the line as we know it today. There's also lots of interesting stuff to see out the window, and it will give you some good ideas of what to do in the stations. So um, for this, uh, Simon, you've done the technical side of things, I've done the script, so naturally there's probably going to be quite a few errors, which we'll hopefully pick up on if we if haven't. If you don't like the script, uh, have a word about it with him. <laughs> <laughs> I just if it make doesn't it make work. sense, this would be the reason why. <laughs> so, that's a nice bit out of the way. Shall we go and look at the Yeah, we're going elements? to talk about the kit. kit Let's go there. for it. Okay. So here we are with the brains of the system, uh, just above my head here. Um, this is pretty much what we install on all the light trains that I run. Um, how it works with the light trains, there's a GPS unit and it sends a signal to our lighting system which also manages all the audio playback. So really, it wasn't long from before my brain started going, hang on a minute, could I just skip the lighting desk and inbuilt the audio playback within the GPS device? And this actually came about uh, with some other railways we're working out for Halloween trains and stuff like that for just triggering audio. So it was quite a quick decision to develop that and then really that's when we came up with the, the thought of, hang on a minute, we could add some value to our normal services and do the audio tour. So it's really simple, there's a box up here, that's the GPS brain up there and then on the roof is the antenna to, to receive the signal which is what makes it so solid because it's a proper GPS system here. And that then sends the audio out to various amplifiers across the coaches. And then we actually um, have put a system in so uh, guards can easily just switch between different modes. So at the moment we're only outputting this to half of the train. And we want it, the guards to have an easy life to be able to decide, right, it's just standard audio, just microphones across the whole train. Um, or we split it we have the GPS or audio tour on one side of the train and that disables the microphone so they can happily talk away to the rest of the train without affecting the system and then there's a third mode which puts the microphone in there as well so they can talk in between the audio tour and they also have a monitor speaker up here that they can turn on just to check uh, if, if the audio is running. Um, that's kind of it really, it's such a simple system, it all automates, all the guards have to do is just set the mode when they get on and, and we're away. And it is a pilot system so uh, you know, we're learning as we go, we've already made some modifications so we're very interested in anyone else giving us you know, their feedback if they've ridden this and then we can develop it further and then hopefully you know, it, it's a product that's, that's polished that I can easily roll out and, and help other heritage railways as well. So there we are, something new to look forward to when you do come down here to the Watercrest line. I'm incredibly excited about how this is gonna go because I've, yeah, I've, I've written the script and I found some theatrical elements for it. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. But one thing I will ask, Understandably, this is new for us. We haven't done anything like this before, so your feedback is crucial and really, really important to us. If you loved it, fantastic. If you think it can be improved, please do tell us. Either chat to the on-train crew or the station staff. I'm really keen that we put a lot of work into this, so I'm really keen we do get this right and have a tour that everyone loves. Granted, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but 
you can't please everyone, but we have tried our best to do so. So your feedback is really important. Yes, there's gonna be a few niggles and bumps on the way, but hopefully we're gonna end up with something really special indeed. And who knows, if this goes well, we can roll out this tech to other events as well. So plenty of opportunities in the pipeline, but yes, your feedback is important to us. But that's it for this time. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you to Simon for chatting to us. And we'll either see you next time or hopefully see you down here on our brand new audio tour.